on, let's clean you up a bit. Yes? This is something you have to constantly do. You have to clean their slobber. They are slobber monsters. There's only a few times she gets vocal. Once is the first trial, and then uh, when we get to the scene, and uh, and she knows she's gonna get to work. She's like, get me out, I'm gonna work. Vlog day, we're out here right now with Officer Mendoza and K9 Claudine. All right, Officer Mendoza, introduce yourself. How long you been in the department? What's your role here? Well, I've been in the department in January, will be about roughly seven years. And um, right now I'm a canine handler. I'm a bloodhound handler. This is uh, Claudine. Say hello to people. Hi. She's our missing persons dog. Claudine's a bloodhound. She was donated to us by the Jimmy Rice Center back in May 2019. She was three months old when I first got her. And now she's two years old. She looks for missing persons. She's scent specific. Now you said she's scent specific. Yes. What does that mean, scent specific? She only looks for like one thing or just like, like what is that? Scent specific means that she has the ability to distinguish between uh, multiple scents. So, so while other dogs, they just know a human odor, like a, how a human smells, she knows how each person, the visual person smells. Even if they're identical twins, twins, right, Momo? <laughs> <laughs> Even if they're identical twins, uh, she could differentiate between one and another. So unlike the other dogs, she could find a specific person amongst others. Like it could be a group of person and she could find that one person that she's looking for. All right, so let's get out of the car and show you guys what she does. So we got Detective Rayner here. He's gonna help us out with a little demonstration for you guys. Wait, Detective Rayner? Detective from where? From Missing Persons. So being like Hannah and Claudine is specific for missing persons, it's, it's only natural that they actually work together. Every time they have a missing person call, they reach out to me and they request my assistance. So just to touch base, when they go to the active scene, the person's not there. So they're grabbing a scent article sometimes from the laundry or wherever they would have something on them that they usually were touching, you know, most recently. The only thing that they can have aside from that would be... A scent kit. It's for any loved ones that you have that they're prone to go missing or have gone missing in the past. It could be any child with special needs or any elderly that might have a dementia, Alzheimer's, or any person in general that um, has the potential of going missing. This is very simple. Uh, you can make it at home. It's, this is a scent pad. I'll demonstrate how it's done. For the person that's collecting it, most wear gloves. If you have little kids, the parents might want to collect it, as it might be easier. Or if you have any an adult that's unable to collect it for any specific reason, always wear gloves. Even if it's the same person collecting them, you always want to wear gloves, okay? You open the pad, then you rub different areas after showering with no perfumes or nothing. You rub the areas, your neck, here, anywhere that has your scent, okay? Let's try to avoid this area because of deodorants. You just rub it. Once you're done rubbing it in, you open here. Make sure it's a dark bag to protect the scent, okay? We're gonna put this in here, seal it, put it back in here, then we're just gonna close it. Here we're gonna write the person's name, date of birth, any contact information, and the day that it was collected. This you could put it inside a Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer, and it will be good to six months or a year. So here we have different things. Uh, we have gloves that I usually use when it's raining or hot days. This is another extra color of her. This is the leash that we're gonna be using for today. This is the, her harness. Um, it's a police harness. And then here we have the member of Jimmy Rice, like I mentioned to you. Guys, she was donated to us by the Jimmy Rice Center. It's actually a member of Jimmy Rice. This is her other leash. It actually has her Instagram handle on it and her name. This one's usually used for events. Every time I take it to any community event, I take it as people love taking pictures of her and sharing. Here, we're gonna get her toy. I know, it's not a police toy. It's not a police dog toy, but it's her favorite toy. So where's the arms? There's no arm. There's what no is this? Arm. It's a little raccoon boy, and it has a squeaky thing. <laughs> she loves it. They actually had to get a lot of replacement. There's a little box back there that has about 10 of them. She loves this. Here, it's pretty much everything that belongs to Claudine. We have water for her. On longer trails, we take her water, make sure she's always hydrated. And then we have different trauma and first aid kit for the dog. Mine is back there. This is all Claudine's uh, trauma kits. 
Okay. So guys, when we get to a missing persons call or a scene, there's a couple of steps that we have to make before we actually take Laurina out and start trailing. First, we get there and we need to interview the family, get some information. Then we need to go and collect a scent article, something that smells like a person to give it to Claudine. After that, we go take Claudine out of the car. We do scent inventory. Then we put a harness on her. Then we give her the scent, give her command to smell and the command to work. And then off we go. Hi, mama. You ready? Yes. After we collect the scent article and spoke to the family, now we get the dog out. We're gonna do a scent inventory. So what's a scent inventory? So a scent inventory is basically a whole 360 of the area and it allows the dog to smell everything in the surrounding areas. And then once you present the scent article, she'll be like, wait, I smell that somewhere. I think it's this way. It just helps her out. Grandma, Mom, you ready? Yes, you are. So every time I put the harness on, she usually yawns. That means that she's ready to go. Right, Mama? Come on. We grab the scent article. We give her the command to scent. Scent. She smelled it already. You don't need to put it right up their nose. Trust me, they can smell it miles away. I'm gonna put this right here. Work. She's not a bike dog. She's not aggressive. All she wants is cuddle and find people. That's all she needs. She's quick. Um, her training is a little different. Um, it's more on laying out trails. She does tracking, but her main purpose is training. So we're tracking uh, a lot of the police dogs that do the tracking. Um, they're more step by step. And it's usually on a short period of time with a fresh scent, something that just happened. With trailing, she actually focuses on picking up the odors in different areas, wherever the odor is. The odor could be in the bushes or in the tree or in the curb, and not exactly where the person walks. So she's able to pinpoint and kind of like connect the dots till she finds the person. So she trails more like in a little S pattern instead of like straight down, step by step. So one of the reasons why the Bloodhound is able to smell so good and why they're used for specifically men training is because they actually have approximately 300 million scent receptors, which is actually 40 times more than any human. Seat. Good. Stand. Good. Flat. Good girl. Stand. Good. Speak. Speak. No. Speak. Good. Speak. Yes, that's great. She carries her toy all the way back to the car. Only time she won't carry is when she's too hot and she needs to breathe. So I'll just carry it for her, but she loves her toy. Now we're gonna take it away and we're gonna put it in the back. She only gets this toy when we're training or when we're actually looking for a missing person. She doesn't get this at home, that's why she loves it. Her long ears that everybody loves to just grab and cover her face with it because they're like blankets, they actually help her sniff. So when her nose is down, the ears are pretty much bringing up the scent to her nose so it helps her on the trail. So one thing that I do for the kids when I go to community events since they love Claudine, I had this patches made, just Claudine's patches. I had them made specifically to give to the kids but since you were helping me out today, I'll get you one. All right, so Officer Reyna, thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. Anything you want to tell the viewers before we head out? There is no time limit needed to report anyone missing. So if you have a loved one that's missing, call us first, please. Every minute counts. And make sure, if you're going to go search for them, make sure you leave whoever was the last person to see them on scene to make contact with us, but make sure you call us immediately. Thank you. See you. All right, so Mendoza, when you're not on an actual missing person's call, what do you guys do out here? We actually help out other units on the road for patrol. Like right now, I'm, uh, I'm on my way to help at assist an officer on one of his calls. Also, I'll do traffic enforcement and active patrol, uh, high visibility, make sure that everybody knows that I'm around. I also like to do attend community events. So I go to community events and they love to play with Claudine. If I'm not doing any of those, I can also assist with female pat-downs, searching of a, a person, as well as a Spanish translation as I speak Spanish. 
This is a way to help other officers out on the road. He's been here before. He's been sitting on here. Um, you, you can see him right here um, grabbing two belt sanders. Um, the estimated total is like 189 because it's two items. And then he just grabs a box and walks out like that? Yeah. He doesn't try to hide them? No, no. He just grabs and goes. Okay, so in this call, basically a guy came in and he took some items and now they're going to show us what is it that he exactly took. Like this one? Or? These two items. Not, not this one. Basically, the guy took one of this and one of this, and actually, the total amount is gonna be a misdemeanor based on the amount of value because it's under $700 that he actually took. But we're still gonna do a report about it. So, it's important that we do the report that way, in case there's repeated events, they could start linking them together, and the officer on the street could help us locate and identify the suspect. So the officer right now, he's actually writing the report. She's the backup, so we're gonna go back in the car since there's no threat anymore. The offender left the scene. We're gonna get back on the streets to see what's going on. Yep, let's go. Um, now we have another call. It's a possible assault, a possible harassment. Yes. Right now, we're just looking for the addresses. Were you the one that called? No, the lady called. Listen, okay. The lady over there called. She put a restraining order on my kids. You know what I told her? Please leave my kids alone. You know what she did um, this morning? She tried to run them over. Okay, and she's, and, and she's a bully. She bullying everybody, okay? My son and my daughter-in-law got into it with her Friday. Okay. They went to jail, okay. right? Okay, they went to jail. They went to jail. I bond them out. My son and this girl got in an argument and they had a fight. Yeah. And she got the end of the fight. How y'all doing? Okay, maybe I can speak to you, sir. Well, I'm listening to you. Okay. What do you mean? Okay, okay, okay. all right. And 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 then and and then she just been she told my car five times. She's a bully. She's a bully. She playing like the victim. And she already got already took sitting in the jail. I bond them out. Them kids ain't never did nothing to nobody. I bond them out, and she got a restraining order, but she jugging at them. She waiting for her to come out to start yeah. most because she got paperwork. I just want y'all to know that we ain't bothering nobody. All right, guys, we gotta get out of here. There's a call in downtown that we're gonna try to get to. Three came out. that the subject has the gun to the victim's head. We're all flying over there. Everybody that's in the air is going to this car right now. All right, so we just got here. The dispatcher slowed us down because the primary units that arrived, they got him on, in custody before we showed up, but they have units on scene right now. We're gonna offer any help if needed. Hey, hold on. So we just got in here. We're at the elevator, and we have another member of the KNI, Officer Aguilera. All right, man. Now you got here before we did. Okay. Everybody's running through because they said that the that the victim had a gun to her head. Right, right. All right. He was up there. He spoke to them. We didn't even get to make it up in time. What's going on? The uh, victim was texting her sister, who was the one that was actually calling the police, uh, saying that the boyfriend had a gun to her head. 
when we made contact with him, the victim stated that he never had the gun to his to her head. She uh, was just worried because he had the gun on him and thought that he might actually use it against her. Luckily, nothing happened, right? Yep. Nobody had a gun to the head. Um, the victim is okay. Everybody's okay. That's and, the most thing. and the officer, the primary officer, is up there. They're handling the scene and you know digging through the facts and, and gonna you know make a decision later on. In the meantime, we're gonna get back out there and uh, keep on patrolling. Absolutely. All right. Take it easy. So remember how I told you that she was actually donated to the police department at the Jimmy Rice Center? Well, that's how she got her name. Her name is Claudine. She's named after Jimmy Rice's mother. So that's why uh, I love her name. Also, there's other two fun facts. Uh, Bloodhounds was the first police dog introduced in the 1800s and uh, it came about during the Jack the Ripper investigation. And the best, my favorite, is do you know the Bloodhounds are the dog most featured in Walt Disney movies? Yes, they are. Everything started with Pluto, because Pluto's a bloodhound, for those that didn't know. So Pluto, all these I just thought he was just like a floppy dog. I didn't even know it was a bloodhound. No, it's a bloodhound. That was the first bloodhound in uh, Walt Disney movies. Wow, awesome. And after that, if you look, most of their movies have a bloodhound. There you go, Claudine. I got something for you. Yep. All right, so we're looking at this car right now. Come on, This car has... No decal, it's got a yellow decal. I was on his arrest report, but that's a license from, from LA. So we took this traffic stop because the decal on the Florida tag didn't have any numbers on it. The top right hand corner has to have the month and year on it that shows the expiration. This one doesn't have it, it's just yellow. That's PC to stop the car, so we stopped it. All right, our backup just arrived. I stop him because of the decal. It's not there, right? Um, I run him, I call CIS, and they don't have any registration of a Texas license. Yeah, you could call them up. You could call them up and tell them, hey, uh, send me the decal. I never received it, okay? And once you get your driver's license, call them and put your new driver's license in the system, okay? So that traffic stop had a lot of little different moving parts going on. Sure at, at first it seemed like, wait a second, this guy is uh, falsifying information, he's giving a fake ID, the tag isn't registered. This is like, this was like shady right off the bat on everything. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. And at first it looked, everything was a little weird. Uh, the person didn't have a decal and the tag, so it doesn't show us if it was registered. And then he handed me a Texas driver's license, which when I was running it on our system, it wasn't coming up. So I started calling other um, databases that we have and other resources to try to get to the bottom of it. When my 15 Officer Cruz came here, he was like, hey, let's try this out. So we got his social and then we ran him in the system through the social. And that's when we were able to show that the tax is licensed, is actually valid. So that was actually good for my partner. Thank you. I appreciate your assistance. There you go. That's why, guys, it's important. Hey, get someone else in it. Yeah. Two heads are definitely better than one. So ultimately, what happened? What so, was the end result? Ultimately, um, everything was fine. His car was registered. He does not have the decal, but it is registered. It is up to date. His driver's license is valid. So we just sent him on his way. We did tell him and give him information about calling them and obtaining a decal and making sure he gets a Florida driver's license next time. Quick note, if you move to Florida, and you establish residence in Florida, you need to get a Florida driver's license. You could temporarily drive with an out-of-state license, but once you register, you have an address here, you have a car registered under your name, you need to have a Florida driver's license. It helps us identify you easier and faster, and it avoids all these confusions. All right, guys, so with that being said, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hold on a second, before we go, don't forget to follow Claudine.